Have you thought about the front edge of your model railroad layout lately and how to install it or how not to install it? Ouch. Have you made a mistake of using screws that were too long? Do you know how to install a Caboose Industries ground throw? How about making track diagrams that explain your layout to other people? Or car card boxes and how to label them? Or do you just like watching trains run? I'm with you on that. Hopefully this video is for you. This is Burr Stewart and welcome to part 49 in my series of operations and construction videos brought to you from my 1973 themed Burlington Northern Model Railroad set in the Seattle region. As you may remember from some of my recent videos, we decided to put up a new staging yard along the wall of an otherwise perfectly good backdrop and behind these struts. As you can see here, we were able to install the main part of the yard, wire it up, and get some trains running. Of course, we had a problem with going to the edge and having a train fall off, so we needed to connect it to the main yard. So I made up this track diagram to show what the layout was of the tracks in that yard and how it was going to connect to the main line. I made the connection with some quarter inch plywood that I cut to shape and installed on some steel L brackets to make the run down from the new staging yard to a connection on the main line against the wall. Here I'm adjusting the track before laying the track and getting prepared to put in the front fascia. I don't know why we call it fascia, but that's what we call it. And here you can see I have two pieces of fascia that were left over from the earlier part of the layout. And I was able to reuse this, which is always very satisfying when you keep scraps wondering if you'll ever use them and suddenly you have a use for them. That's what happened here. So now you can see that I've installed some boards underneath my quarter inch plywood to hold the screws to support the front fascia. And basically the drill, no pun intended, is to put a hole in the wood that you want to screw into and then using a large drill you make a countersink in the fascia and you'll see this in a second. And there's my big drill and I make the countersink and then put in the screw and hopefully it gets pretty close to flush with the edge of the fascia. This is eighth inch masonite that I'm using, very common for using it. Now you see I'm drilling the pilot hole in the wood behind the fascia. There I'm drilling out the countersink again, screwing it in. Now what happened on this end piece is uh, hard to watch, but when the fascia material pulled away from the board, I forgot to go back in and enlarge that hole in the wood. So of course, once I put the screw in, it split out that little thin board. As you would expect. Ouch. I was in a pretty much of a hurry, so I decided that rather than take the board out, which had been glued in, I would just go ahead and glue the board back together, wait overnight, and come back and enlarge my screw hole and get back to work. So there you can see I put some carpenter's glue on there and I'm gonna clamp it down and leave it overnight. Of course I gotta remove the excess glue that comes out of the crack and see me doing that. And in a few minutes we'll come back and look at what happened the next day. Here you can see I haven't laid the track, but I'm going to need to do so. A few days later, I was able to get the front fascia installed and to get the track laid, including inserting a switch in the main line there. And I even clamped some pieces of wood to mount the Caboose Industries ground throw on. There you can see I'm sanding it so that it'll be nice and smooth. And later, after I took this video, I stained it with some hunter line brown stain. 
I sanded the whole fascia in preparation for paint, and you can also notice that I had previously put some spackle in the old holes so that they would disappear when I applied the new paint. Turning now to the Caboose Industries ground throw, which is that black plastic device there, I marked the wood with a drill where I needed to drill the holes, and then as quickly as possible, I drilled the pile of holes for the two screws. All of this video is speeded up four times more than normal, so that's why you see my magic hands just rotating that drill like some kind of a machine tool. I find that the number zero by three eighths inch wood screws are the best ones for mounting these round throws, and Walther's carries them among other people. You might notice that there's a little electronic circuit next to the wall, right next to this turnout, and that's a mono frog juicer from Tam Valley. And there's a little green LED that's hard to see in the video, but I've already connected this frog juicer to this old Shinohara number eight turnout that I'm using in the track work here. And when we get done with the installation, I'll be able to flip the switch back and forth and you'll see the frog juicer light turn from green to red once I apply the power. But first I realized that I had a little bit of an obstruction in the throw rod, so I had to get the knife and trim that out, make sure that it was moving properly. I should have really glued down the turnout before I did this too, but it in some ways makes it easier if you install the ground throw first and then apply the glue to the turnout. Anyway, you can see it go to red now, They're green and red. Well, after all this construction, we get the enjoyment of testing it out and seeing if it works and getting to see some trains run. Here comes a Burlington Northern Jeep 9 with some test cars in tow, coming down the 4% main line from the Stacy Street yard and heading towards the new Black River Junction yard that we just installed. Now it's going to go into the first spur that's in the staging yard. It's about a four foot long spur right next to the main line. So it's gone about to the extent that it can park in there and it's gonna stop. So far, so good. Now we have three UP locomotives coming out of the staging yard, the same ones you saw earlier that have been marooned here until we built the ramp. And this is their first trip off the ramp or off the staging yard and down the ramp towards glory. This is about a 5% grade down this ramp but it's very short, so I'm not particularly concerned about performance or slipping or anything like that. Just for laughs, to make sure that this turnout works, we're going to head out onto the main line and then back down the hill towards Harbor Island and West Seattle, otherwise fondly known as Lego Town. We'll pull up there, flip the switch over, and then back down. Three toots means we're going in reverse. Well, it looks like the train is navigating that new turnout just fine. There's not much room for scenery or need for it right here because we're going over the laundry tub in the basement that we use for cleaning up from painting and construction. But now you can see we're headed out towards Lego Town, which will become Harbor Island in the future.
stay tuned for that. The big pipe here is a sewer clean-out plug for the whole house. Hopefully we'll never have to get into that, or we might have to remove our new staging yard. Now just for laughs, I wanted to show you what happens when you use uh, screws that are too long. And of course, with quarter inch plywood, it's hard to find screws that are short enough. These are 3 8 inch screws holding on a steel splice plate underneath the quarter inch plywood. The easiest way I've found to deal with these sharp points sticking up is to just take a moto tool with a cut off disc and cut off the tips of the screws. The best part about it is it's like a firework show, so it's just kind of fun to do. Not only are those sharp points a hazard for people running their hand along it and getting cut, but we plan to add a fourth track to the staging yard on this surface where I'm polishing the tips of the screws. I guess we better speed this up so we can move on to the next subject. If you do this job right, you catch both yourself and the house on fire. Oh, and ruin your eyesight, but I have goggles on, so no concern there. Well, just for review purposes, this is the view of the new staging yard with the track diagram, so you can study it if you want. Now our video enters the very pleasant phase of loading the new staging yard with trains now that we've connected it to the main line. Here you see our UP train coming in. And as you might remember from some of the other videos, we're storing Milwaukee, Union Pacific, and passenger trains in this yard. That's the purpose of it. In the inset, you can see a camera that I put on the end of the staging yard to watch the train come in. And I also planted a train cam in the gondola car on the end of the train, but unfortunately I didn't have it turned on, so I can't show you any footage from the train yet. But we'll have that in some future video, I'm sure. We're moving along Lego Town and trying to get into a better position to see the end of the train pull into the end of the staging track. There's that gondola car with the camera, but like I said, it's not, unfortunately, it's not working. Fortunately, though, the staging yard seems to be working just fine. There's the GoPro camera that's taking the picture in the inset on a little tripod. So there we have our Union Pacific Transfer train parked nicely with plenty of clearance. The next train that we want to position in the staging yard is the Empire Builder, which is a longish passenger train that normally runs from Seattle to Chicago, and it's normally pulled by F units in 1973 era, such as number 732 there. Beautiful engine. And so we're backing this train from the coach yard, which was connected to Argo Yard in the old track plan. And we're backing it through the Stacy Street yard and over to the downhill grade towards our new staging yard. If you didn't follow that, don't worry about it. This part of the video is mainly rail fanning anyway. If you turn the headlight off, the reverse headlight, or, yeah, reverse well, headlight now you can see off. I've attached the camera car to the back of the passenger train hoping to get uh, footage of that, which I didn't get. But if you can just ignore that old gondola, this is the Empire Builder repositioning itself in the new Black River Junction staging yard. That's a cool view of that S-curve, I like it. I like the observation car on the end too. Be fun to be writing that right now.
In the inset view, you can see the train coming towards us once again, and we'll park it on another track. The fact that there's no other trains in here is a little suspicious since we just watched the Union Pacific train stage. I think that's because I have these videos out of order, but I'm not going to fix it. I'm going to just let you enjoy the new staging yard and the Empire Builder backing into it. This is really going to be nice having this staging yard in operation. In the past, we tended to have the Argo yard all clogged up with UP transfer trains, Milwaukee trains, and all of these passenger trains. And in a typical operating session, we often don't even get around to running the passenger trains. So having them completely off the layout like this will be a big help. Also, it gives us room to do some things in Argo Yard, like create a Union Pacific engine terminal area. And if you've ever been rail fanning at Argo Yard in Seattle, you know how important that is. Now, the next train we're bringing in is the International Passenger Train, which provided service between Vancouver, British Columbia, and Seattle. And we run that train because, of course, uh, our layout goes from Seattle up to the Bellingham Staging Yard. But again, we don't run it uh, except once a day in each direction. So it's nice to be able to put it in this remote spot. And we're going to park it in front of the Empire Builder on the long track so that we have both of our passenger trains staged on one track out of the way and we can run them in the order that they're staged. Very good. These E units belong to Dave Enger, and they're, they're really beautiful sounding things, as you can hear. It looks like they're going to fit. Okay, you're clear. Excellent. All right, now for backing in the Milwaukee transfer train. It looks like we've already gotten it across the ramp and we're up onto the new staging yard. The Milwaukee Road benefited from the Burlington Northern merger because it got trackage rights to run up to Bellingham from Seattle. But the equipment that it had, the locomotives, were so unreliable that these trains were a, a nuisance to the Burlington Northern dispatchers because they could sometimes break down and cause derailments and so forth. They limited the Milwaukee Road trains to 25 miles an hour, and the BN engineers were known for fast running, and they found this very annoying. Hold up for a second. I like those Milwaukee cabooses, though. They're very interesting looking. This tank car is off the track. Okay, well, I was hearing some uh, clicking going on down here. I think they're... Go ahead and push it again. Clicking as they're going over the something down here. I don't know if it's a joint or a switch. I'm a little concerned at that derailment since this is the first run of trains onto the staging yard. But that front track on the quarter inch plywood is a little flimsy, so we'll probably do some more fine tuning on that before long. How much room do I have down there? Lots. Looks like we have room on this track for a pretty long Milwaukee transfer yeah, train. Three feet. That's good. Three feet of room. Three cars now? Oh no, like six, seven cars. Six, seven cars, that's okay. right. You can hear those GNE units idling in the background. We forgot to turn them off. I'm on the caboose end, giving the engineer some remaining track lengths. How we doing? 
uh, two cars, one cars. Half. Good. It'll do. Okay, very nice. I agree. Very nice. Well, now that we've gotten our staging yard all staged, full of trains, let's figure out what to do with the car card packets that each of those staged trains carry with them. We need car card boxes. So I painted some Micromark car card boxes and let the paint dry. And now I'm going to stencil with a white pencil some lettering on there so that it'll be clear which box is for which track. And we'll use the same layout diagram that I showed you earlier for deciding what track number to call each track and that sort of thing. And I just thought I'd show you how I do this stenciling. What I really like about using the white pencil on the green paint is it's easy to see and it's very easy to erase and change if you have something go on on the layout that you want to change which box is in which position. You just erase the white pencil markings and sometimes you have to repaint it with the green paint, but sometimes you don't. And you do it. Now, you saw that I clamped this board down to give myself an even surface. Sometimes I do it by eye, and sometimes I clamp it down just to make it a light, slightly straighter stencil lettering. But you'll see some different angles of this as we proceed to mark up the car card boxes. Once again, I sped up the video. It's kind of amusing that I left the car card packets in the boxes while I was lettering it. But there was always a risk if I put them somewhere else, I wouldn't be able to find them later. So I just thought I'd keep them with the box and be on the safe side. Now we can take off the clamps and admire our work and go down to the next level of lettering. I need to put the track numbers there and make it as clear as possible to people which box is for which train. I think you get the idea of how this is done, so I'll speed it up ultra fast and we'll go on to the next thing. Which is, how do we mount it to the layout? In this case, I don't have any place to mount it on the actual staging yard. So I'm going to put it down below in front of the Harbor Island section there. So I measure exactly where I want to put it. And then I come in with my drill and make some marks in the back piece so that I can drill the pilot holes there and then come back with the screws. Of course, I want to make a little bit of a countersink in the wood of the car card box. and then blow it out so we don't have any sawdust left over and then put in the screws simple as that put in the car card packets and we're good to go look on the left there there's a packet for the milwaukee first we look at our empire builder which is on track two there i believe no, track three. But Milwaukee 85-A, you see it there? There's our 85-A. So we got the right train on the right track and the car card packet for it is in the right box. So there you have a well-organized model railroad ready for its next operating session. Excellent. I know we're getting into the weeds in this video, but look at that tape measure there on the side of the layout. You wouldn't believe how often somebody asks me, how high is the layout in this spot or how long is that track? And I just grab the tape measure and measure it. It's a handy thing to have around.
Now you've got an overview there of the Lego Town, the ramp that comes up from Lego Town, the new turnout that we installed to have access to the ramp up to the new staging yard. There's the track diagram for the new staging yard. And there's only one thing left to do, and that's to install the car card boxes for the right-hand side of the staging yard, those tracks 5, 6, and 7. And so we're marking them in just the same way that we did the other one. And before you know it, it'll just be like it's always been there. I use a level bubble there to make sure it's level. I don't know why it makes any difference if it's level, but you just get carried away with these things when you're building. In this case, we only have three boxes for track five, six, and seven, so I can just put one hole in the center and that will be enough to support the car card boxes. Nice. Now all that's left is to put the car card packets in their appropriate box. In this case, all we have is our Jeep number 1922, and you can see there that's the car card that I have for it with those two cars that it's pulling. The brakeman on the front end of the Jeep approves of what we're doing. And I hope you do too. And hopefully there won't be too much splashing from the sink that will mess up the car cards. We'll see. Time will tell. Well, that brings us to the end of another strange video from the desk of Burr Stewart at the Burlington Northern a HO scale model railroad modeling the Seattle region in 1973. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you'll view many other videos on my channel both past, present, and future. For now, this is Burr Stewart wishing you much fun with trains. Okay, you're clear.